warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to GVI Literary Classes. Today we are discussing with you some poetical devices, especially imagery. You all know that poetry and painting, these are two different tools of representing a scene, idea or an action. Like painters have a brush in their hand, writers have the, their pen. Painters decorate their canvas by using colors and texture. Similarly, a poet or the author uses pen to decorate his writing by using imagery. There are other tools, other literary devices that decorate the writing. Today we are discussing the imagery part of it. Imagery, as you know, is a figurative language. A figurative language to represent, it represents either object, action or an idea. But it represents it in such a way that it appeals our senses. And you know, we have all, we have five senses. So anything that appeals to our sense, creates an image. Maybe if an image that is created appeals to eye, it appeals to ears, it appeals to nose, it appeals to mouth, it appeals to skin, and it appeals to our internal sensations as well. So keeping in view, we have broadly divided imagery into five classes, five groups. Number one, visual imagery. Number two, auditory imagery. Number three, olfactory, olfactory imagery. Number four, as uh, tactile and number five is gestatory now what are the organs that are involved in this in visual imagery our eye is the tool that perceives the image therefore the name visual imagery Something that can be seen creates visual imagery. In auditory imagery, our ears, anything that we can hear from ears creates an imagery, we name it as auditory imagery. And olfactory, smell. Our nose. Whatever we can smell, the nose becomes the organ of smell. So, the imagery created is called olfactory imagery. And tactile, our second, that's touch. Anything that we can perceive, we can feel through touch creates an imagery called a tactile imagery. And about taste. Anything pertaining to taste creates an imagery called a gestatory imagery. In eye, in case of visual imagery, the poets use, poets are authors, especially, uh, in particular they use the images or graphs or graphical representation to appeal our eyes. So actually, what is the purpose of this uh, imagery? They usually generate a vibrant and graphical representation of a scene. They create vibrant, very colorful and very graphic representation that makes their writing very lively. So, 
For example, a blue frocked woman. It creates an image that we can see. So if the poet or the author wants us to see how he has seen the things, he creates an image called visual imagery. And if he wants to make, if he wants to hear what he has heard or what he has of what he has aimed to make his readers to hear, he creates an auditory imagery like any any sound. It pertains to the language of the sound. It pertains to the sound. Chirping of birds. Chirping of birds is a sound imagery. Similarly, smell. It can be pleasant or unpleasant, pungent, or any sensation that we can smell is olfactory imagery. And next is <coughs> touch. Anything that we can feel like hard, hardness, softness. The silk is soft to touch. The image that created is tactile imagery. The hardness of the cement, again the tactile imagery that we can perceive through skin, either soft or hard. And the last one is gestatory, taste. Any image can be created to create a vibrant image of taste, like salty sugar, sweet. Apart from these five imageries, the two more important, important imageries are organic imagery. I'll bring your attention back to this tactile imagery. Tactile imagery represents hardness and softness. We call them external feelings. They perceive external feelings, but there are internal feelings like that cannot be perceived by eye, ear, nose, skin, or tongue. Like we have hunger, anger, hate, for that matter, love. We perceive them and the image created out of them is organic imagery. These are internal feelings, internal feelings. So anything that evokes the internal sensations like hunger, anger, hate, love, we categorize them in organic imagery. So care should be taken. Organic imagery is an internal feeling while well as Tactile is an external feeling. It gives sensation of hardness and softness while they give, uh, they, re they represent hunger, ang anger, hate, love or likewise. Apart from this, there is one more imagery, we call it kinesthetic imagery. In kinesthetic imagery, the poet or the writer wants to represent movement. It is the imagery that represents movement. For example, running, walking, throwing. So in case of kinesthetic imagery, uh, the poet gives us a feeling of movement. 
and that's why it's called a kinesthetic imagery. So we have visual imagery that is put that pertains to eye. We have auditory imagery that pertains to ears. We have olfactory pertains to smell. We have tactile pertaining to skin. We have gustatory pertaining to taste. And apart from that, we have organic imagery pertaining to the internal feelings and kinesthetic imagery pertaining to the movements. So what all you have to do in these are uh, in this exercise is to take a poem prescribed in your syllabus, read that carefully and check out in each line how the poet has used these poetical devices, these imageries. And in case you find five or six or all seven, you underline them, write down visual imagery, auditory imagery, like that. So you can categorize your entire poem by analyzing the important tool, we call it imagery. And apart from that, most important thing about these images is that it decorates the language. It makes the language more beautiful and more lively. And apart from that, a writer who tries to build a sense, a sensation that he wants to create an audience for himself. He wants to appeal your senses. Not to the eyes, not to the ears, but even into the internal, internal feelings. So in particular, a poet who writes a poem tries to reach to you through all these five senses. So that you can understand his state of mind and his composition. You can, you can better understand uh, the poetry. It, it also adds aesthetic value to his writing. So, one more important thing, if you want to read poetry or short stories or any piece of literature, you have to keep a very vigilant eye on the devices that he has used, so that we can better understand him. That's all. In the next video, we will discuss with you more poetical devices. Thanks for watching.